Welcome everybody to our webinar tonight. Uh, our presenter Libby Vinalek is going to present on the Classic Cubicle. My name is Sam Fetcho and I'm the technical producer for you. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to point out one of the panels on your computer screen. You guys are all muted, but you will have the opportunity to ask questions by typing them in. So there, if you look to the right side of your screen, you'll see question, the thing for questions and just go ahead when you have them, um, type them to us and then we'll have time during the webinar to like take questions and uh, get your questions answered. Okay, and with that, go ahead, Lib. Great. Thank you, Sam, and thank you everyone for joining me tonight. I know it's the crunch at the end of the semester or just a busy spring, and I am excited to just chat, talk fashion with everyone for a little bit. Um, there we go. Uh, so this is me. My name is Libby Vinalek. As Sam said, I went to Virginia Tech, and I'm your personal stylist for tonight. So I majored in apparel, merchandising, management, and design at Virginia Tech, so I do have a little bit of street cred. Um, but we didn't all play a, how to match sweaters and dresses and pick out jewelry. We did a lot more of the business side of it, but um, I do feel like it's a hobby for me, but also I do have a little bit of a background. I joke that I'm the resident headquarters fashion consultant. I do work at fraternity headquarters here in Columbus, Ohio. I work in chapter support and educational programming by day, and I'm a fashionista by night. I once had an awesome pair of lemon printed capris from Forever 21, and I thought they were the best thing ever. I tried to find a picture of them and asked my mom to dig around for a photo, and they were not to be found, but I promise you they were really great. And my rule to live by for fashion is you can never have too many scarves. I love buying them in that they don't go to style and you can just keep keep a collection going. They're my favorite thing. So moving forward, my one disclaimer for this evening is I'm not a fashion blogger or a professional stylist, but these are just some things that I've learned throughout the years of being out of college and making my wardrobe work the best for me. I've lived in older apartments, which means not a lot of closet, closet and storage space, so I've had to really focus on getting the most bang for my buck, and also with storage, I can't have like a big walk-in closet of everything I could ever want. Um, and I would consider myself having a little bit of a preppier style. Um, so even if you might not like the options I chose, but hopefully the ideas and concepts we talk about tonight will inspire you to look at your wardrobe a little bit differently. Um, so I realize that what uh, my tastes might not appeal to everyone, but um, I hope that you get something out of this. So first we're going to go with some hard and fast rules and guidelines um, because some things I think are not non-negotiable and other things are. So first we're going to go with the hard and fast that I don't think you can bend. Business is professional, so suits, full work suits, um, tailored pants, blazers, things like that. Um, depending on the workplace, sometimes that's really, it's a much more conservative atmosphere, but um, definitely some places have those rules, and there's not a lot of room for wiggle, but that's okay. You can still be creative in your outfits. Um, heel height max, four inches by far. Any higher than that is really uncomfortable, for me at least, um, but it does tend to look a little more nightclubish. Uh, any pa anywhere past four inches. So I think three to three and a half is the perfect height. It's comfortable, it's still high, and I don't feel like my feet hurt by the end of the day. Dress and skirt length. Um, by far the fingertip rule, I have long legs, but I still even go further than that because I want to just make sure that I'm keeping a professional length. Um, to, there's no question about like too short of dresses or skirts. There's just no way, way about it. Um, you've got to at least cover your butt, but be at least as long as your fingertips. Um, and good fit. There's a fine line between relaxed and baggy that can look really sloppy. Um, just having stuff that's really well made or just having things that fit you really well. So even if you find a really great piece and it's not fitting you just right, finding a good tailor um, just to have it nipped and tucked where it needs to be to look really custom fit will look great. Um, neutrals, navy, cream, white, black, tan, camel gray, these colors are going to go really far in your wardrobe because you can wear them almost all year long, although I have put a ban on black and gray because I've worn so much of it this winter now that it's nice out, I can't look at another piece. Um, cutouts or crop tops are not work appropriate, period. I don't care unless you're working at Coachella. Um, even on Casual Friday, I would not suggest wearing the, that type of apparel. I don't think that it's ever appropriate for work. Um, and then leggings, I wear leggings to work on casual Fridays, and I do make them work with other things. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, 
they're not pants. <laughs> leggings are leggings, but I try to go by the rule of wearing, um, covering my butt. So maybe a longer sweater or a tunic or even like a dress that otherwise might be too short to wear, but if I wear leggings, it's okay. Um, so Kappa Fraternity Headquarters is business casual. Um, definitely in the summer we get a little more relaxed than that, like more sun sundresses. And we do have casual days uh, throughout the month. So um, I've worked there four years, and I've seen a little bit of what kind of goes in the workplace. Now some more suggestions. Business casual can look different in a lot of different places. Some places are more dressy business casual. Other places are like Crocs and jeans and like a ratty t-shirt. I would not recommend that because, again, it's still a professional workplace. Um, and like I said, casual Friday is not equal t-shirts. Um, you can step it up just a little bit. And Jenna Lyons, who's the creative director and CEO and president of J. Crew, um, has always said that leopard is neutral, and I absolutely live by that. Um, but I just encourage it because it's a fun neutral. It's still black and brown, but it's kind of a little bit sassy. So adding a piece of leopard into your wardrobe is definitely encouraged. So for all of you women who are coming out of college um, and you're trying to figure out how to make your clothes work for your new professional job or internship or something like that, I just want to remind you that there are certain pieces of clothing that belong in the club or the bar you're going out. And I've seen what chapters wear for um, chapter, like formal chapter meetings, which are sometimes still a little more casual. They're supposed to be business casual, but um, what I've seen is a lot more relaxed and that's okay. But that doesn't need equal business casual. So you, we're going to talk about some ways that you can figure out how to um, make some of those pieces work a little bit better for you. First, we're going to talk about some basic staples that are going to be the workhorses of your wardrobe. If you do end up moving to a really small part and you don't have a lot of space, these are the absolute must-haves. Um, definitely a black blazer. You can wear it cuffed up. You can wear it with jeans. You can wear it on casual Fridays. You can wear it over a dress. Um, definitely having one. I have one from Target that I got probably five or six years ago, and I still love it. It works really well. A white button-up, definitely. It might seem preppy, but uh, in a professional wardrobe, but definitely you can wear it under sweaters. You can wear it over dresses. Um, we'll show it a little bit later how you can use different um, options in uh, outfits. But definitely white or blue. Like I like both, um, but something that – and they don't go to style. These are things that are going to be – are going to pass the test of time that you're, if you invest in a good quality piece, or even if you find a really great piece at Old Navy or Target or Gap, they're going to last you quite a few years before you have to replace it. A shift or a wrap dress. A shift dress is uh, kind of more of a boxy cut, and then the wrap dress is a little more form-fitting if you're not familiar with those terms. Um, but if you find one in a classic print or even just a solid color, you can wear those probably all year round. Um, shift dress, sometimes they're sleeveless, so you might want to have a cardigan or a blazer, but if you have one, find one that has sleeves, that's even better. A cardigan. I love cardigans. If you don't have one, I suggest getting one right now. Buy one on Target or somewhere else. I have a bunch um, in several different colors, so I have ones for summer and ones for winter. And then I have a few that I wear all year round. I have a tan one and a white one that I use pretty much, and a black one that I use interchangeably, and navy those neutral colors there and that can help tone down like a really bright dress or um, otherwise just bring everything together. And a pencil skirt. Uh, you can have black, but I would suggest maybe getting a different color. Um, you know, like a tan. I have, I'll show you what I wore today. Actually, I have a neutral leopard print um, pencil skirt that I wore that I use a lot throughout the year. Um, it's kind of more of a spring, summer, early fall, but it still works for a good portion of the year. Tailored dress pants, uh, having like a gray or a black or even like a lighter gray will, or navy will go really far. Um, just something you, again, you can wear those in the summer. Like black work pants are pretty much a something your go-to, and you can just wear it with like a simple blouse or something or anything else. Like I said, a solid color blouse. Printed blouses are great too, but solid colors will probably last in terms of trend a lot longer. Jewel tones are usually always in style or just like a white or a cream will be great. A trench coat. You can use a trench coat basically three and a half seasons out of the year, I would say, unless it's blisteringly cold like it is here up in the north. Um, you could use it all throughout the year, even if it's raining or if it's just a little chilly out, and it always looks polished. Like there's no doubt that a trench coat looks really clean and put together and 
once you find one, London Fog has a bunch. You can get them at Macy's or Banana Republic. Um, pretty simple thing to get, but it, that again, those don't go out of style, so you can have those for years to come. And I say a chambray shirt because I work in a more business casual setting. I have a polka dot chambray shirt that I wear at least once a week. Um, it is definitely a workhorse, and it's something I wear all year round. I use in the summer and the winter because I cuff up the sleeves because my arms are long, so the, the sleeves are a little short for me. But um, I found that it is something that I find myself going to a lot, and I need to definitely get a few more because I use them a lot. So I would suggest it as a staple. And it's something I can wear casually for the weekends, which is also great. Now we're going to talk about accessories, and I didn't format this slide, but that's okay. Um, a great segment, statement necklace when you have basic pieces and you just want to add a little more personality to your outfits. That great statement necklace, you can um, definitely, it can be your go-to piece. I've started buying a few more of those because I like my wardrobe right now, um, but I would just want a few more things that, that are easily interchangeable rather than investing in, like, a new dress or something. Is necklace is a lot cheaper. Um, a fun bright scarf, like I said, you can never have enough scarves, but um, you, it's something that can be interchangeable. And if you have a few that have, are some good prints, then you can use it with a dress or a blouse or a sweater and things like that. Classic handbag, um, I found that having like a nice, good, structured one to hold up, like papers, laptops, things like that, your iPad, whatever you bring to work, having it all in one place, kind of, you can get really nice ones at Marshalls or TJ Maxx, um, like a leather one, or even if it isn't leather, um, a pretty good, like, nice nylon um, that will, like, in a neutral color, will look really good. Stud earrings, for, especially for those interviews, uh, if you, you always want to err on the conservative side, so, like, small hoops or stud earrings, like pearls or gemstones are going to be your best friend, just something simple, nothing that's going to stand out too much. I, the watches are coming back in style. I'm all about the watch. I love them. And then you're not tempted to look at your cell phone, which can look like you're disengaged and you just are trying to check Instagram or Twitter or whatever. But having a watch, I found that I've, I'm looking at a lot more than I look at my phone, especially if you're in a meeting or something. You want to just avoid touching your phone at all, so having a watch is great. Skinny belts are going to be your best friend. And later on, I'm going to show you a few things where skinny belts are really going to make the magic happen, so I would suggest finding a few of those. You can find them at H&M or Target um, or J. Crew. some really fun places. Old Navy has them, so investing in a few of those. They're really cheap, so they're interchangeable, which is great. Um, another way that can add some interest to your wardrobe. Pumps, nude and black pumps are absolute musts, and same with flats. Uh, you could do nude and black flats, but flats are kind of more fun when you get into some colors or patterns. Um, Definitely things that, uh, depending on your space of your uh, closet, mine's a little bit big, smaller. So I am very intentional about my shoe purchases of how often I'm going to wear them because I just don't have a lot of storage. And nice sandals. There is no rubber flip-flops are not okay in the workplace unless you work at a pool. So having some nicer sandals, uh, some wedges, or even just flat ones, um, just to make it a little more polished, especially this summer. I wear a lot of maxi dresses to the office in the summer and nice sandals, um, and that's okay. That flies where I work, but it might not fly where you work. So now we're going to talk about making that your wardrobe work for you. So you can probably do an inventory and take a look at what you have in your closet, some things that we talked about tonight and seeing kind of where some pieces that you might be missing. I actually don't have a classic white button up. I know, shame on me, but, and I know it's a staple. I just have not found one yet that fits right. I'm a little bit bigger chested uh, and I have a broad shoulder. So it's hard to find one that doesn't do that little button gap opening in the right around the chest area. So uh, it's still a work in progress for me, but definitely getting those uh, pieces together and then uh, you can start working on the fun things. So style ideas, keeping it simple and just adding on accessories is an easy way to just always look polished. This girl, she was found on the J. Crew Factory website. Uh, simple sandals, she has black, white pants on, uh, and just like a gray, you know, a nice like kind of gray short sleeve sweater that this outfit will probably work in spring or summer. I wear white pants all year round. I don't fall by the Labor Day or Memorial Day rule. Um, but I would definitely add a bright scarf or necklace to her outfit. She still looks a little plain to me, but that's just me. I'm a peacock in every sense of the word, so I like bright colors. But I would totally wear this outfit. Um, for polishing things off, think of the rule of three. Three acts and pieces outside the main piece. So this girl, her cute little polka dot dress. She has a chambray shirt, then a nice 
necklace and a cocktail ring, I would personally, I'd probably drop the cocktail ring and then put a little skinny belt on it or maybe drop the necklace and put a scarf on or something like that. Um, and also you'll see that I sourced these pictures. I did not create them and these are not me. So I figured if fashion bloggers are already doing the work, why should I recreate the wheel when I can just borrow their pictures? Um, so just her outfit, I love the idea of put, having a button up underneath a dress. It just adds a little bit more interest and in that it's another way you can wear that dress um, in a different rotation. Uh, I stuck this in here just as we get into showing some other things about trendy pieces. Um, I vote the 73 rule. I'm all about going with trends and having some fun items in your wardrobe, but you don't want to have all trendy items because then you're constantly having to replace them when they go out of style in a season or two. So I vote 70, 30, 70% classic pieces, things that are you're going to wear for seasons over and over again until you wear it threadbare, and then definitely some trendier pieces, uh, you know, like fun printed blouses or, I don't know, like a certain type of sandal or something like that. Um, you know, the trends come and go. But having those, again, those classic pieces, they're never going to go out of style, and you're going to find yourself having a lot less of those moments in the morning, like, oh, I have nothing to wear. I'm almost four years out of school, and I found that, that these rules that I've kind of learned along the way, I'm having those mornings less often, which is really great, and it feels really good when I don't always constantly feel like I have nothing to wear. I don't like anything I have in my wardrobe. I finally found things that work for me and that I like to wear over and over again, and I don't get bored with them. So we're going to do some three ways. First, we're going to look at this hot pink skirt because it's fun. Um, so this skirt is three ways you can wear in the workplace. Uh, on the left, it looks black on my screen, but I, it's a navy sweater um, on the left. So a navy sweater, and then it looks like a little silky blouse with a bow tie. Very cute. Some accessories, some nude pumps, and some classic earrings. Very easy to go together. All three of these bags are great neutral handbags that would work in the workplace for you for many years. Uh, great style, um, classic lines, good color. They're not too trendy. It's not like a wild, it's not the color of the year or anything like that. So tan has been in style forever and it will stay in style. Then the nice orange shirt, I uh, just tuck that in if you're feeling really bright and bold. Again, with another type of neutral heel. That one's a little bit strappier and some fun accessories. And then on the bottom, um, Pink and black, always a great combo. A printed blouse with a black pump. Um, as you can see, she, this blogger, Cap Hill Style, who I reference a lot, I will reference a lot, and I check her blog pretty religiously. She posts almost every day. Um, she has some really great ideas of how you can make your wardrobe work for you and, like, you know, getting one piece and then figuring out how you can put it together in different ways. We're going to do another three ways for a skirt. For uh, this girl, put it from putting me together, she... Work casual day. I'll wear all three of those to work. Um, her sandals are in the middle. They're nice. And then for that date, I would probably wear either a navy or an orange or maybe a mint green blouse. I wouldn't wear white. Uh, it seems like a kind of almost safe, a safer choice. But she looks great in all of them. I, truly, these are all great looks for work or like for a night out with girlfriends. Um, but having like a great white blouse and one skirt, and she can style a few different ways. The jean jacket. So where I work. Again, uh, it's more business casual, so the jean jacket is a great piece to have. I use it all year round in the summer and the winter, um, depending on where you work. You kind of just have to see what other people wear and kind of gauge um, the interest of kind of what's cool and what's not and what floats at your workplace. Uh, we're going to check out six ways with this shift dress. This blogger, um, all about fashion stuff, she got this dress from H&M. It's from a past season, so I couldn't find it current, but H&M does have some good classic pieces like this, and I think it, her, this dress was like $39, a great buy, and a great color. It's Marcella, the color of the year this year, if you didn't know, um, but this color looks really great on here. I don't like it personally, but it works for her. Um, it would, I don't think it would match my skin tone, <laughs> um, but she styles it six different ways, which a lot of them are really brilliant. First, she puts a blouse over it with a Statement necklace and a little belt looks great with some fun leopard heels. So it looks like a skirt, even though it's not, which that can really work in your favor because then you really have two pieces in one. She has that long black cardigan, kind of color blocking it, again with a fun necklace and those slingback heels. She looks great. Then in the third, she has a blouse under it and a jacket over it plus a belt and nude heels. Definitely a great way. These all look like three different outfits, and you could wear this in like a month's rotation and not feel like you're wearing the same thing. 
Then she goes three ways further. So she has a leather, kind of like a motorcycle jacket, which is really fun, a little edgy, and a floral um, scarf. I would probably do a cardigan in a scarf. Um, but the leopard cardigan, leopard is neutral, with those fun high knee heel or high knee high boots and a little skinny belt. Again, the skinny belt is really pulling the job here. And then for look six, she has an orange crew neck sweater with a simple gold necklace. I would even put a button up underneath that. The button up that she had here in look three, I would put that underneath um, her look in look six. And those neutral wedges, she wore them in two of these outfits. They those are great pair of shoes to have. They're brown. They're wedges, so they're probably a lot more comfortable to walk in than heels, and so she probably does get a lot of use out of those. Do we have any questions, Sam, before we go any further? Sam? Uh, sorry, I was muted for a minute. Uh, no questions. Oh, that's okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Totally fine. Yeah. Um, from Wednesday boardroom to weekend bliss. So I've found this again from one of my favorite style bloggers, Cat Hill Style. Cat Hill Style, she used to work on the Hill uh, in politics, and now she's in law school, but she loves politics, and she considers herself a D.C. person. Um, does a lot of this, like, from th pieces that will work for your, f like, fun weekend wardrobe, but then also things you can wear to work. So this little blouse is, like, a little dotted blouse from H&M. It has kind of a tie thing, a tie feature in the front. Looks great. Uh, that's a classic design and she'll probably get a lot of wear out of it for many years so she paired it with a navy pencil skirt and a fun pink blazer as well as uh, some neutral silver and gray accessories but then for the weekend uh that yellow cardigan with white jeans really comfortable casual friday or for the weekend going on flea market whatever um you could even mix it up and wear that cardigan with the blouse with the skirt uh or switch it up and wear the blazer with the blouse with the jeans. Um, so definitely a few pieces that you can mix and match. That's what I found is finding pieces that I know I can wear, not just to work or not just on the weekend. I try to find a lot of things that will work in both places so that I don't feel as limited in what I'm buying. So I'll show you what I wore today. Uh, I just happened to wear an outfit that I felt really fit in with what our um, discussions were. So it's a neutral kind of like a tan leopard print skirt I bought a few years ago from the limited it has served me really well um I love it I it's a little big on me but I still wear it all the time because I love it um but the top is from J Crew Factory it's a little cotton knitted sweater I've worn it for years it's held up pretty well I have a nice stateless necklace from Loft uh again I've had that for a few years everything nothing is really brand new except uh well I have a watch and uh, then the heels I did score at Marshall's for $35 last night. I was really excited about that because they're just um, kind of plain taupe colored pumps. And I know I'll have them for quite a few years if I take good care of them. So we're going to talk about some shopping tips. I have, we've all been impulse buyers at some point or another, especially being at like Marshall's or Home Goods or, or not Home Goods, but Marshall's or TJ Maxx where there's only one of the item and you feel really frustrated if I don't buy it, I'm never going to find it again. So here are some things that you can think about uh, when you're looking at the item. I like to kind of put things in a shopping cart and like think about it for a few days uh, just to make, you know, I'm trying, trying to be more intentional about my purchasing and being mindful of my closet space. So can you wear it three different ways? Can you think of three different outfits right off the bat that you can wear it with um, of things you already have at home? Because then you know you're going to find ways to incorporate it into your wardrobe because it probably goes right in with your style and taste. And can it be more, worn in more than one season? A lot of the dresses that I have, I wear spring, summer, and early fall. Um, even some of those maxi dresses I pushed into, uh, you know, fall and early spring just because sometimes I get sick of wearing black and gray. Uh, but just try, if it can work in more than one season, it will probably be a lot more beneficial to you and it will get a lot more. The cost per wear will be a lot lower. I also think about that when I'm looking to purchase something maybe a little more pricey. If, if I can think of how often I'm going to wear it, it won't seem as bad to, you know, maybe splurge or invest a little bit. Do you have room for it? So this is something I think about all the time. Do I have space in my closet? Or thinking about the one-in, one-out rule. So if I bring this thing home, is there something I could find that I could donate or put in, you know, uh, put into a donate bag for later? Um, so being mindful of that. Not all of us have luxurious, wonderful walking closets. So it's uh, something that I try to remind myself. 
And what's the trend level? Is that something that's super trendy or is it something that you feel like you could probably get a few years out of? Um, is it something you've seen that trend for a while? So it probably is going to stick around for a little bit or is it something that's like wildly new? It seems like kind of very much more out there. Is it something that you think you'll like to wear maybe even like in a month or two or in a year? Again, is it worth the investment thinking about that cost per wear analysis? Like those tan pair of heels I bought. Yeah, they're only $35 and they're leather and they're going to be great. But maybe if they were 80 or 90 I probably would have thought a little bit more about it. But as they were really comfortable and they're plain, they're a neutral. So I probably would have still spent a lot more on them because I knew that it was worth the investment. Can you wait for it to go on sale? I watch for sales all the time. I never pay full price. So uh, I usually have a few things, like I pin them on my fashion boards, and I just kind of uh, keep an eye on them and just kind of like when I, the next time I have a little bit of extra money, I'm like, hmm, I think I might go get that. Another thing to think about, what is the recommended care? Something I have not been careful of in the past and washing something that's supposed to be dry cleaned and not ruining it, but it certainly not doesn't look as nice as when I bought it. Um, avoiding dry cleaning. I don't have time to do dry cleaning, um, hand washing, anything like that. Um, so I try to be really cognizant of making sure I'm checking what the care label says. And maybe you've heard this before, maybe you have it. If you don't love it on the rack, you're never going to love it in your closet. You only like it, you only like it half as much as you liked it in the store. Um, although I have had a few purchases where I liked it in the store and I've come to love it and loved it even more than I when I bought it, but just something to think about. If you're on the fence about it at the store, you're probably not going to like it at home. How to make do, especially with your wardrobe, if you're just starting out, you don't have a lot of extra money to go shopping and get a whole new work wardrobe, or if maybe you've lost weight or something's not fitting right. Um, just some quick tips from your local fashionista. I have long arms. I've never had blouses and things that fit me properly, so I just roll up the sleeves and then add some bracelets or a watch. Um, or I buy a lot of three-quarter sleeves because then I don't have to worry about it and I'll it doesn't feel as awkward. But definitely growing up when I was little, I never felt like anything fit me. And I also have long legs. My my torso is short. I'm only 5'5", five five, but I just kind of lucked out with long um extruments, whatever those are called. <laughs> um, crop pants are in, which is awesome for me because I don't have to worry about them uh, pants fin fitting and being the, of the appropriate length. It is such a blessing. Um, so for all you long-legged tall girls, you can rejoice. If you're short, for our short friends, hem tape is your friend or sticking to dresses and skirts, um, finding pants that fit and that are short enough um, until you, unless you want to take a few YouTube videos and learn how to sew. It's really not that hard to learn how to do a blind stitch, but if that just does not sound like your cup of tea, I would suggest finding a tailor or just a little bit of hem tape to make do in the time being. Um, if it's a little too big, cinch it with a belt or throw a cardigan or a jacket or a blazer or a um, jean jacket over it um, that will make it not seem nearly as bad. But I know sometimes when something is a little too big on me, I feel uncomfortable. And if I don't feel good about what I'm wearing, I'm not going to feel like myself all day. And now, like I said before, remember there's a fine line between roomy and sloppy big. So just being cognizant of that, I have been guilty of buying something on the shelf or buying something at the store. I'm like, well, it's just a little big, but I really love it. And then I get home and it's just not what I wanted. And I don't find that I don't end up wearing it because I never liked the way it fit in the first place. And I never went to a tailor, but I finally found a good one. So I've lived in Columbus four years and finally found a tailor. <laughs> and some noteworthy blogs. Some of them I reference, other ones um, just some ideas if you're looking. These bloggers blog about workplace and corporate fashion all the time, so it's constantly new ideas and it's a great way to just kind of keep abreast on new things. And it's kind of like having a personal shopper. I follow Capital Sales Style all the time and I like about 85% of the stuff that she posts, so it's kind of very easy for me to just check what she's posting every week or every day and get a few new ideas and watch for some things to go on sale. Um, Memorandum, she was formerly the Classy Cubicle up until recently, um, a few weeks ago, I think, when I was writing this up this presentation, I went to her website and it's changed. So um, I did not mean to copy her, the name of her blog, but I thought it was easy enough to, to know what we're talking about. But she's Memorandum now. Um, but she has a lot of really great workplace fashion. She lives in New York City and I think she works on Wall Street, so that's helpful. 
Workchic, another great one. I don't really check it that much, but when I did a quick Google search of professional work blog, fashion blogs, I found some of these. Command Dress is another one. Corporate is a capital style, though Belle is what she goes by. She and Corporate are friends, so they do frequently refer to each other in their blogs, which I think is pretty funny in blog land. Um, and some secrets to a stylish success. Uh, so these are places that I, are my go-tos for where I find great pieces. Um, you might have some as well. I hope you'll share them when we're wrapping up this webinar. Um, but I love 6pm.com. This is my best kept secret. People don't know about it. And so I feel almost guilty that I'm telling all of you because that's my secret. <laughs> but it's Zappos' discount website. So they don't carry just shoes, they, but they carry clothes. But they have all the high-end brands. Frequently I'll go... I'll find a pair of shoes, maybe at like Nordstrom or Zappos or something, and I'll look on 6 p.m. to see if they have it there or if they maybe have that style but maybe a different color but discounted. I got my wedding shoes. Uh, they were made by Badgley Mishka, which is a pretty high-end brand. I got them for like $80, and they're originally over $300, so that was pretty awesome. Definitely my best-kept secret for clothes and shoes. Shoes and I mostly buy shoes from there, and they have a pretty good return policy as well. Old Navy. Old Navy can be hit or miss, but I definitely have some pieces that have stood the test of time in my wardrobe, and they've held up. Sometimes Old Navy can also have a reputation for not being the best quality, but they've stepped it up recently, and I think that they have some really great shift dresses and comfortable clothes that you can wear uh, throughout the year. The jean jacket I have is from middle school. I kid not, and it's from Old Navy. It's still in style, so I probably spent 25 bucks on that thing, and it has definitely proved its worth. Target. Target has some really great brands that have classic shift dresses. Like I said, leaders from Target, so you can definitely have some good stuff there. Um, blouses, cardigans. I'm not a huge. The last time I bought a cardigan from them, it stretched out pretty quickly, but that was a few years ago, so I haven't bought one there since. So I can't really say how their quality has held up since then. Also, if you're a Lily Pulitzer fan, don't forget Sunday, April 19th, the Lily Pulitzer for Target collection is going to be released. I know Sam and I have it on our calendars. You should too if you're a Lily Coulter fan. Hopefully you know about it by now. Um, but get on it because it's probably all going to sell out. Uh, Jaker Factory, they have launched their website. They launched their own factory website about two years ago and it's been really helpful. Um, sometimes I found that things that I really loved at Jaker and I didn't want to splurge on came back the next year at Jaker Factory in a very similar style or color uh, like dresses or blouses or a certain print that I liked, um, so that's kind of neat to watch, and they frequently carry the same things year after year, which is nice, um, so I have stocked up on quite a few different types of pants and skirts that they carry throughout the year. The quality is a little bit less than J. Crew, and the fabrics um, are usually a little bit thinner, but like I said, this that one sweater that I wore today um, has held up and has been pretty good, so... Just some things to keep in mind. Dress Barn, a coworker who proofed my um, this PowerPoint, that was her suggestion. I don't really shop at Dress Barn, but she said she's found some really great stuff there, so she encouraged me to put it in. And hopefully Marshall's TJ Maxx is in your rotation of places. I usually have to be in the mood to go because I know it's kind of like a rummage sale. You have to like find, actually find things, but I usually lock out with shoes at least, which you know can be a blessing or a curse. Nordstrom Rack, if you're lucky enough to have that in your area, but they do have an online web store, so Nordstrom Rack is their off-brand site. Saks has, also has one, and so does Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus is last call, and Saks is called Off Fifth Avenue. All of them are, you know, super high-end brands, but for way deeply discounted, so you can find some really great stuff there and not pay a lot for it. For our southern friends, Belk, I really miss having Belk. We don't have it in Ohio, but I know it's a great... Uh, department store in the south. It's same with Dillard's, uh, but Bulk has a little bit of a lower price point and they have some really great stuff. Um, so I'm jealous of all you, but they do have an online website so you can shop online, which I most, almost exclusively shop online. Loft and Ann Taylor, they kind of go hand in hand. Loft is definitely a lower price point and is constantly having sales. I would never buy anything full price at Loft or Ann Taylor for that matter. They both have sales pretty frequently. Um, I have three pairs of heels from Ann Taylor, and they are my favorite pairs of heels. They're comfortable. They have lasted for years. Um, a lot of times when the little um, the heel part wears through, I just go take it to the cobbler, and he replaces that, and they, you know, I have it for a few more years. So they've been my favorite. They're a little bit pricier, and I, so I just wait for a sale, but absolutely worth the, worth the investment. 
um, for me at least. Banana Republic, they have recently hired a new creative designer, so I feel like they have kind of gone waves on their style and trend. I haven't been a fan of them in the past few years, but they have really kicked it up a notch in the past year. So, um, And that's what I encourage you with a lot of these brands where maybe you don't shop at a lot of these places, but check back season after season. I don't shop at H&M a lot, and I don't have this on the, that on this list because I think it's really hit or miss, but sometimes you can find some good stuff there. It's some places are kind of season by season on how – successful you can find some great pieces there and gap i have some of their ultra skinny pants that i wear easily two three times a week i have navy and black and they're great they're cropped so for my long legs doesn't matter um they have some really nice like premium dress pants that i would highly recommend also they're good for that white class and button up they have sales as well please don't pay full price final thoughts Quality over quantity. Yes, it's great if you have 10 cardigans, but they're all holy and falling apart and stretched out. That's not really going to do you a lot of good. And you're not going to like wearing them if you don't feel comfortable and you know that it's kind of feeling looking ratty. So having like a few really good quality cardigans is going to go a lot further for you. Same with uh, shift dresses, uh, finding a few in a really great cut. And if you find something that fits you so well, buy it in every color. I have kicked myself for not doing that here and there. And every time I do buy something in every color, I'm so happy that I did because I find that there I have a piece that I know fits me well. I like wearing it. And I have it in three different, three or four different options. It's so great if you can afford to buy all the colors. And then, like I said before, never or very rarely pay full price. Um, sometimes if you find a splurge item and you know it's not going to go on sale, um, then saving up for it is great. But I usually try and wait for a sale or at least some type of promotion before I pull the trigger on that. So... That is all I have for everyone. Does anyone have questions or comments or suggestions, uh, tips and tricks that they found have helped them with building their wardrobe? If we have anyone who's out of college, um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. Um, go ahead and write them in on the questions pane. Type them in. Sam, do you have any questions that I meet your expectations? I took, I took some notes. I don't know if anybody else did, but I wrote down that 6pm.com. I want to check that. Oh, good. That website, yeah. for sure. Yeah, people are always shocked. Like, oh, I've never heard of it. And I'm like, you're kidding me, because that's where I get a lot of stuff now. It's great. Um, actually, I'll ask a question while we're waiting to see if anybody else has anything. So, you know, you commented about quality over okay. quantity. And would you put that in... Like, would you look at things differently if you're looking at your sort of trendy outfits or your trendy items as opposed to your classic things? Like, do you think it's okay to spend le maybe less money on those kind of items since they're maybe only, you only wear yes, them? Season or all years? Yeah. So having, I would definitely suggest spending more on something like a, a black shift dress or a black sheath dress that you're going to wear for probably the next five, 10 years if you take good care of it. Um, Maybe if you want to spend over $100 on that, um, whatever your price point is, what you're comfortable with. But I would definitely not spend a lot on those trendy pieces. And, you know, I think I'll say when I bought something and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so cute. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe I spent 40 bucks on that or something like that. Yeah. So um, I've definitely gotten more conscientious about what I'm spending and how I'm spending and thinking about, like, am I going to want to wear this in two to three years? So. Um, here's a comment from Britta. She says, start with neutrals. You can always use color to accessorize. Absolutely. Totally. Having a nice cream colored blouse is going to last you all year long for years and years. And then, that, like I said, those fun scarves or having those fun statement necklaces that can easily be interchanged. And statement necklaces take up a lot less room than, um, you know, having a lot of cardigans or something like that. My scarf drawer is getting a little full, but don't tell my husband. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have anything? If not, I realized I didn't put my contact information, but I can type it on right here. Um, if anybody has any questions or want to contact me privately, I'm happy to talk with you about... Um, fashion things. My email is lvinalek at kkg.org and I'm happy to chat fashion with you anytime. It's, um, I do talk about it a lot with my coworkers, but uh, since I don't work in the fashion field, I don't get to talk too much about it. But when I get to do webinars like this, it's fun. So thank you everyone for joining in tonight. I really appreciate you giving me your time and 
your attention and hopefully you learned a few things and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. And be sure to answer the questions that will pop up on your screen as we end the webinar. We really appreciate any feedback that you have. Thank you. Have a good night.